Good morning. I'm Pastor Phil, and this is Petey, my assistant uh, with me today. And this is Ocean Community Church on Sunday, August 16th. And this is our first of two services today. This is what we call our discovery service, where we do things a little differently. And then at 11, we have our traditional service that has more of the elements uh, from uh, traditional liturgy. So it's good for us to be together today. I hope that you've had a okay week, a good week. It's starting to, the light is changing outside. It's starting to show a bit of fall coming on. Although I have friends in Phoenix where it was 117 this week and uh, they that's a bit much for them. But it's good for us to be together today as we move into the fall season. Um, and uh, what a year this has been and promises to be yet. Uh, uh, maybe some people thought by the fall we'd have this all sorted out, but we don't. And so we're going to try to find our way together, and we will find our way together. We're just going to have to be patient and kind with each other a bit as uh, we struggle through decisions. And uh, as we see, we'll see in the scripture that we read today, uh, we may not always make the right decisions along the way. Uh, but in the midst of all of this, God walks with us and intends to bless us and use us to bless the world. And so uh, we'll talk about that together today. So as we open today, uh, I want to mention that Consistory met this past week. It was our normal uh, Consistory meeting uh, of the month. And uh, we prayed together and we checked in with each other. We always do that. How are you doing? What's going on? And we studied the story of blind Bartimaeus. You may remember that story from the Gospels as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the cross. And there's a blind man by the side of the road and the blind man calls out and Jesus says, what is it you want me to do for you? And uh, we talked about this idea that it's so important to ask for what you need during this time. What do you need to be well? Uh, and so often we don't know what we need to be well. We just are uneasy. We're unsettled. Uh, but we need to think about what is it you need. You individually need to be well. And then we need to discuss that with people that uh, we trust that we can reach out to. Uh, so I invite you today to ask that question. What do you need to be well? I invite you to really seriously think about it and then to reach out to us or to others for what you need to be well in this. Our theme today is about being well on an uncertain journey uh, in uncertain times. And I have a lot to say about that later. And in the notes, you can read it and review it. So I encourage you to use the notes that uh, we provide through the website or through the email that we send out. Lots of discussions going on uh, right now about schools. And so parents and students and, and staff and Administrators, our prayers are with you in this very confusing time. I shared a, a prayer this week with our children and youth, and um, I wanted to share it here. So let's take a minute and just offer this prayer, pray along with this video uh, for students and uh, teachers. Dear God, school's different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray. So that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day, isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 And so our prayers will continue to be with students over these next weeks. These are such uncertain times. And the video talks about being uh, moving into an unknown future. And so uh, 
it's a challenge for us, but we'll study the story of Abraham today, and it'll give us some insights about that. I also wanted to invite one of our members here this week uh, to share some thoughts about being well in the midst of this stress. Dara is a counselor at one of our area high schools, and she works with young people to give them coping skills. And I'm sure she's been very busy these past months. Uh, so I asked her to take time today to come and to share a brief exercise about grounding ourselves and coping. It involves breathing and seeing and listening. And I think it's part of what we all need to be well these days. So I'm going to invite Dara to come and, and talk to us about that for a bit. Good morning, OCC. I just wanted to reach out to you guys. Um, all age levels right now are feeling stress. So I wanted to just show you a technique that anybody can do at any point in time. This is a way to calm yourself down, stop the outside noise for a moment, and to center ourselves into the present moment. This can definitely be used prior to praying because it grounds you. So we're going to practice it all together right now. You start off by taking three slow and quiet deep breaths. So we're going to start with the first breath. You're going to breathe in and just breathe out. Do another one. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and breathe out. You're gonna do the third breath. Take a nice deep breath in. And go ahead and release it. And then now what I want you to look, do, look around your room, wherever you're at. And I just want you to sit there and think to yourself and focus on, on five things in the room that you see. I right now see the screen. I see a plant. And just go ahead and take a quick look around your room and see five things in the room you're sitting in. Next, I want you to look around the room. Actually, I want you to feel four things around the room. You can still look, but go ahead and like, if you're sitting in a chair, feel the feet on the ground. You can touch the chair. You can give yourself a nice big hug and feel that nice squeeze but go ahead and feel four things as to where you are. And now I want you to listen carefully around for the different sounds. Can you hear the rain outside hitting the window with the ground? Can you maybe hear the dog as my dog is sleeping on the ground right now and I can hear her snoring? Now at this point, I want you to sit there and go ahead and smell two things that you can smell. Maybe you can smell breakfast cooking right now or the smell of coffee. The last thing I want you to do is to list something positive about yourself. You can either say it out loud or just say it to yourself. Something along the lines of, I am kind. I am a good cook. I'm a good friend. I am a good steward of God. The last thing to do to center yourself is to take three more breaths. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. Then release it again through your nose. Out through your mouth. Last one. Hopefully this makes you guys feel a little bit calmer. And I want you to enjoy your day, OCC. So very grateful, Dara, for you taking the time to do that. And uh, you know, that's such an important exercise when we find ourselves, sometimes we don't even realize that we're not breathing, we're so anxious and we're so uptight. 
and uh, just take a few times through the day to calm ourselves down, maybe especially when we're looking at social media or the news and we get ourselves into a state where we can't think well, where we can't relate well to others. And uh, so this is a good exercise. And we could, we could have a long discussion about the times in the Bible where Jesus is in a crowd and they are all pressing on him and he decides he's gonna go to the mountainside and pray for a night or a day. And uh, they're all wondering, where did he go? And, but Jesus knows he has to be centered, he has to be grounded if he's going to be any good to those around him. And so uh, thank you, Dara. And let's, let's all try to practice this a bit. So it's good for us to be together. Uh, we are making phone calls and driveway visits. So if you need more than you're getting from us right now, reach out. We're trying to stay in touch with everyone, but we don't always know what's happening. So uh, reach out. We're going to be in live stream for at least the next month. Uh, as we see what happens with school reopening and community health. So we are gonna learn to do this well and uh, to be well. And so it's good. So today we pray that we will breathe in the breath of God. Uh, in Genesis, God breathed into clay the man and he became Adam, Adam, the living being. And so breathe on us breath of life, fill us with life anew this day, we pray. What we do here is to try to get our hearts and our minds back in a place of faith, of hope, and of love, to come together in the presence of God, to worship, and to praise, and to remember, and renew. And so again, I hope you'll use the notes that we've provided for later reading and reflection, watch the video, listen to the podcast. One of the positive things about how we do this is that you can work with the recordings and notes all through the week. And there are links to videos and songs and articles throughout. So in terms of sanity anchors uh, today, I, I think the grounding is a sanity anchor for us too. Otherwise our brains get in a state where we can't think clearly. Uh, also, I think it's important for us to study history. You know, I, the, after science, you know, and I'm kind of a science geek and uh, you know that we talk about space and uh, the stars and space probes and all. Um, but after science, the thing that I, I like to read most is history. And uh, especially for us to study global Christianity and church history. You know, sometimes to get perspective on where we are in history, what's happening around us, what's happened before. Um, uh, when you think of the history of the Christian church, um, this is a really small part of things. And uh, God has carried the church through all kinds of challenges. And uh, if you study history, you learn to be cautious about making, uh, getting anxious about how everything's going to turn out. God keeps things moving along. Even in the war years, uh, when there was horrible things, uh, God moved us through those. Um, there is a dawn coming. Weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning, the scriptures say. So I encourage you to read history. And if you're looking for a place to read, I encourage you to read about Roger Williams uh, back in the early days of uh, our nation. Uh, he's a very wise man about how we lived as a church and society. And so I encourage you to look at that. So let's remember that we are not God. Uh, we are not in control of the world. And uh, perhaps we're not meant to be. And uh, we are not in control of others. And perhaps we're not meant to be. We can manage our own lives, our hearts and minds. So I don't have all the answers for you, but I have some answers. I have some things that I can give you that will help you to live in faith, hope and love. We have good news today of God's love, of Jesus' life, death and resurrection, of the Holy Spirit's presence bringing us love and joy and peace. And so this is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and discover how we might become more of who God calls us to be in Jesus Christ. And so grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us worship God together. And so I'm going to offer an opening prayer, let us pray. 
God of eternity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before whose eyes all people and all nations and times are known, we come today in the confidence that in Christ we have been called to blessing, that your intention towards us is beneficent and good, that in spite of so much of what we see and experience that's so disturbing, that you are a source of life and light and hope to us. In the time we spend today, open our eyes to see your love, open our ears to hear your voice of grace, help us to taste and see that you are good, and in seeing that, that we become able to live gratefully in faith, hope, and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite Amy to come and lead us in the songs that she's prepared for us today. Morning, everyone. Um, so the songs I picked today fall in line with uh, Pastor's message of having faith and trust in God. Uh, so I'm going to start with Our God is Able. Thank you. 
next song I will share is Oceans. in the service. The theme today that we've taken up, and you know, it's always interesting the way this works out. I put these down. I'm starting to build again into the future and put uh, messages on a 
spreadsheet for each week so we can plan better. And uh, we took for this week the passage in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, where they talk about people of faith and uh, living in uncertain times. We have to be people who depend on faith. We have to trust God. We have to walk with God. And that has to be not only intellectual for us, but it has to be emotional as well. We have to feel it and our bodies need to know it. And uh, so that's part of what, uh, when Dara came in and, and uh, the breathing idea that our bodies have to rest in faith as well. And uh, so we, we do that. One of the uh, production assistants came in here this morning and told me we lost some Facebook Live for a while. And uh, sorry about that. We'll um, see what we can get for the recording that we post on YouTube later. But I wanna uh, prep the scripture a little bit by talking about Abraham as part of our faith. And so living in uncertain times. In the big picture of world religions, uh, one of the differences that there is between the religions is the difference between monotheism and polytheism, or believing in one God, or believing in many gods. And there are people in our world today whose religion is to believe in many gods. Polytheism is a belief in many gods. If you are Hindu, you are polytheistic. And you may have seen news recently about a big display in Times Square that was being written about um, uh, the opening of a Hindu temple. And so um, we have in the world monotheism and polytheism. And there are three major faiths that are monotheistic, that are mon one God faiths. And that's Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And when you study the history of these three monotheistic faiths, you learn that they are all branches of the same root, that Islam comes after Christianity, which comes after Judaism. And if you trace back, back, back to the common root, you end up with Abraham. And so Christians, uh, Muslims, and Jews all would agree that Abraham is an important figure, that Abraham was called by God to a journey of faith. And so Abraham is a very key person in the Bible story. Abraham starts off as Abram, a fairly well-off person in one of the advanced societies of his time in the Middle East, in southern Iraq. And so in some way, God speaks with Abram and calls him to leave where he was and go somewhere else. This is, this is very early in our Bible. And uh, we have to remember that gods were geographic, uh, the way they understood them back then. So to leave where you were and go somewhere else was to leave the gods of that place and go to another place. And, and for Abraham, it's in favor of a God who is in all places. So this was kind of a revolutionary thought that there's one God above all gods who is over all places. And wherever he went, wherever he would go, he would still be with that one great God above all gods. And that was a big deal. It shifted world religions. It gave you and me our Christian faith in a God who created the world and all people, who is present in all places, who is the God above all gods. And thus, even in our Ten Commandments, it's reflected, you shall have no other gods before me. And so it's this quest to know the, the one true God, the one great God. And this is all rooted in Abraham, the man who left not knowing how this would all work out. And so that becomes very important for our understanding of what it means to walk in the steps of Abraham, that we are people who are called onto a path where we will not know everything we want to know or how it's all going to work out. The scriptures that we read will say Abraham left not knowing where he was going. Um, and so our VBS song uh, that we'll hear again later today, Everywhere I Go, is actually a pretty significant theological statement. People in Abram's time believed that you could leave God by leaving a place or a country or a nation and you would leave 
God if you left that place. But to talk about a God who is in all places and above all gods and all nations and other gods was a big deal. It's why we have Judaism, Christianity, and Islam today. All are Abrahamic faiths, tracing back to Abraham and this call. And William Urey of the Harvard Negotiation Project, for instance, has started a project called the Abraham Initiative or the Abraham Journey to help people from those three faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, to figure out how to get along by actually physically walking the path that Abraham walked. And so there are groups of Christians, Jews, and Muslims who walk the path of Abraham together. And they meet people on the way and they talk together. Um, and so it's an interesting project. Now we have an advantage in our time because we know where Abraham went, but he didn't know. Uh, he only had a promise that if he would go, God would bless him and God would bless others. So Abraham, you go, I'll bless you, I'll bless others. You know, when I used to teach interpersonal communication at Montclair, uh, with undergraduates particularly, we did work on temperament analysis uh, to help people figure out themselves and others. And one part of that about people's temperament that's different is their comfort with ambiguity and uncertainty. Uh, some people are adventurous. They have a high tolerance for ambiguity and uncertainty. And they're not bothered by not knowing what's going to happen. They're just going to go and it's going to work and they're going to discover and it's going to be great. Uh, other people, though, are planners and they want to know everything about where and when and how and what's going to be the case and where are we going to be day two and where are we going to be day three and what's going to happen then and where are we going to get this food and where are we going to get this. Um, and that creates tensions. One of the fun things that students would write to me is they had these aha moments where they understood why they couldn't get along with a friend or a, a, a partner because they were a planner and they were an adventurer. And so they just couldn't, couldn't work together. Abram was asked to be an adventurer. We're asked to be adventurers. He was asked by God to go without knowing where he was going. I will guide you and be with you. I will bless you and bless the world through you. Go and you will see. And the good news is that Abraham went in faith. Uh, faith is what keeps us going when we don't have all the answers. Faith is what keeps us going when we only have part of the information. Faith can deal with ambiguity and uncertainty because it has a direction and a way of being. And, and that's so important. We, we have a direction and we have a way that we will be as we go in that direction. And wherever I end up, whatever I face, this is what I know and this is what will guide me in that place. That's what it means to be a person of the faith of Abraham. You know, there are people uh, who want the Bible to answer every question that we have. There are people who want certainty about everything. Uh, and it seems to me very odd for us to ask a book about a man who went out not knowing where he was going, to ask that book to give us all the answers about where we're going. It just doesn't fit. The Bible is a book about faith, living in faith. It seems more appropriate that the book tells us a story about a man who follows God into the unknown, and, and it would tell us, that if we're going to be following God, we're going to go into unknown with faith and trust instead of a roadmap and all the answers. I think that's one of the hard things about this COVID time. We haven't done this before. We don't have a roadmap that gives us all the answers. What we, uh, what we should do about schools and restaurants and church. And we take a few steps and then we evaluate and then we take a few more steps. You know, even before COVID, it was hard to know what to do. We live in this uh, rapid changing world around us. Some talk about a, a, a VUCA world, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Uh, we've got artificial intelligence and genetic manipulation and Mars probes and deep fake videos where you can make anyone say anything and you can see it for yourself. Look, they just said it but it's a deep fake video 
and they really didn't say it. We're living in these uncertain times, unknown, unpredictable future for us. It's a good time to sit down with Abram and say, Abraham, you did this. How should we do this? We don't know where we're going. And I think Abram would say a few things to us. And so when we come back in a little bit after the scripture reading and I talk to the children, then we'll talk about what Abram might say to us in the midst of all of this. And so let me read the scripture for us today. It says this, this is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through 10. The word of God to us. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. But verse seven, by faith, and then it says, uh, no, Enoch was commended as one who pleased God. And the verse says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and that God rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but God's word remains forever. Thanks be to God. And so I want to talk to the children for a minute. And uh, good to see you again. And I hope that you're doing okay. Boy, everything is so confusing now. We don't know how it's all going to work out. But, you know, we know how we're supposed to be in the middle of it. We're supposed to be people who believe that God is with us, who pray as the video showed us, and who can breathe and stay calm so that we're ready to do what God asks us to do be people who love Jesus, who love others, and who let the Holy Spirit give us peace and patience and kindness. So that's pretty much a lot to do in itself, right? Even when we don't know what else to do. So when we don't know where to go, we know how to be. And everywhere we go, uh, God goes with us. And so I wanted to play again the VBS song and have you sing it along with us today. Everywhere I go, I go with you. So let's do that together.
soul. Your kingdom is my home, and I don't walk alone. So isn't that a great song? And, uh, you know, maybe between breathing like Dara taught us and singing that song a little bit, we can realize that we can do this, that God will give us what we need and that we'll be okay and that we can reach out to others through what we need. And God will give us uh, what uh, that we can have faith to trust that God will lead us through this. And, you know, I know there's a lot of questions going on for you right now. My granddaughter and we, we talk about the big cold that's going on right now. But as Christians, we believe that we go with God through all of this and God will help us. And so remember that as we go through this week. And I hope, uh, hope that you're well. So let me share uh, some thoughts about the message today about Abraham. So um there's, I have a couple of takeaways from the Abraham story, the man who went not knowing where he was going. So one of the takeaways that I have is expected to be a one-way trip. You know, when I go to the store these days, there are signs on all of the aisles that tell me to go through the aisle this way and don't go back the other way. And I try to do it pretty much, you know. I I see the thing that I want and I have to go down the other aisle and come back up the other aisle. You know, I try to obey the signs and go the way they tell me to go, the one way. When Abraham left where he was, he was committed to going forward and not backwards. Uh, he goes, it says, <clears throat> and he never looks back. And in fact, he doesn't want to go back to where he was before. We would say today that Abraham has a forward-looking mindset. I'm going somewhere, and that means I have to leave something behind me. And there's an interesting part of the Abraham story where he's looking for a wife for his son. And so uh, in his cultural tradition, he's going to have his son marry uh, a girl from the family connections that he had in the old country. Uh, but he tells his main aide, the person who's going to help him find a wife for his son, that's the way they did it then. Uh, he says to the servant, don't take my son back there. Isn't that so interesting? He says, don't take him with you to go find his wife for him, because if he goes, he may want to stay there because it was much more developed than where Abram was. They had big uh, cities and aqueducts and, and a lot of culture. And Abram says, we are on a journey forward. Don't take my son back there. I don't want him to see what we left or he will want that instead of this. You know, don't, isn't it so true that we have a natural tendency to make the past look really good. We have a word for it, it's called nostalgia. And we remember things, not really as fur, but as we would like them to have been. And we clean it up and we put some filters on it. And all of a sudden that looks really good compared to this unknown that we're facing now. Uh, some people spend a lot of time reminiscing and remembering. Uh, we talk about the good old days. But Abraham realizes that for his family to be following the call of God, they have to focus on the future, not the past. Don't take him back there. 
And he says, they have to move from the past into the future, not into living the past over and over again. It's not a Groundhog Day kind of thing. Faith is not like that. Uh, so as Christians, we are on a journey forward. There's going to be change. There's going to be progress. The New Testament talks about us being transformed from one degree of glory to another. Uh, so that means that we'll be different next month than we are now. And next year we'll be different. And five years from now, we'll be different. We don't want to be the same people. We want to have more wisdom and more grace and more uh, experience of reaching others with God's mercy. Uh, that's what growth means. It means change. And so we will have experiences that we will learn from. We'll gain wisdom and insight and courage. We are pilgrims on a journey like Abraham was. This is what it means to live a life of faith, not to stay in the comfortable place where everything is certain and everything is familiar. You know, and that affects how we think about what's going on today. There are people who think times are now the worst they've ever been in history. And uh, they look back and they wanna go back to some time, some place, and you name the, the, your own time and place you wanna go back to. And they have given up hope for the future. You know, in, in theology, when we talk about Bible study and, and seminaries and all in theology, this discussion of the future is called eschatology, the thing to do with end times. And it's so interesting that if you study church history, which I mentioned before and I love to do, and it's, it's so important for us to see that fashion, just like clothes fashion changes, eschatology fashion changes through history. There are times when people are uh, what we call premillennial, where they have the idea that things are just gonna get worse and worse and worse, and the world is gonna explode, and then God's gonna make it all new. Uh, and, and there are times when premillennialism is a big part. And there are other times when there's what's called postmillennialism, which is, this, is the idea that God's kingdom is going to advance and the people of God are going to grow and bless the world and things are going to get better and better. And then, then Christ will come and the end will be. And so different times, people are either hopeful about the future or they're hopeless about the future. And so uh, when we think about this, the Abraham story really argues for us to have hope for the future. A recent news report uh, from the Middle East offered this great quote I read recently. It said this about the Middle East. There are really two coalitions in the region today. Those who want to let the future bury the past and those who want to let the past keep burying the future. And I thought that was so, uh, such a, a good statement. Those who wanna let the future bury the past and those who wanna let the past keep burying the future. Hope means that we are anticipating a better tomorrow, that we are expecting the arrival of the fullness of God's kingdom, the renewed presence of Christ, that we are going to move forward in faith and trust and keep moving to be a blessing to the world. That's what Abraham believed in hope and moving forward. And so that's one of the insights I think uh, we can take away, that this is a one-way journey we're on into God's future. And we want to see how we can bring that future into the kind of a world that God intends it to be. Another insight from Abraham's life is that we can expect to get help from new sources. So Abram is traveling in this uncharted road and there's a famine and he has to figure it out. He, he, so he's, there's a famine, what's he gonna do? And so he looks around and he says, well, down in Egypt, they have some food. And so we're gonna go down to Egypt and I've never been there before, but circumstances drove him to look for answers and find new resources. And so it's very interesting. You say, well, why didn't God just send food from heaven? You know, well, I don't know, but that's not what God did. And God expected Abraham to look around, see where he could find help and make some connections. And so 
uh, we would say today he had international relations. He went down to Egypt and he got help from them. Uh, Abraham learns that along this unknown road, you will face hard times and you will meet friends that you never met before. You have to look around and see where the resources are. You know, and this is so true for our food ministry, for instance, uh, and, and the, the deacons uh, reaching out to others. That, and, and I've heard this from others uh, all across the county as I participate in county calls about volunteer organizations trying to help people. And they're all saying, we're dealing with people who have never needed this help before. They, they've always been the people who are giving to food ministries and, and making donations. And now all of a sudden they're on the other side and they're coming to us and they say, this is uncomfortable, this doesn't feel well. But in faith, we understand that the life of faith is that sometimes we're gonna to have to expect to get help from new sources. And that's okay. Abraham did it and he was starving. He went down to Egypt and he found food there. You know, having good relationships with those around you really helps. Uh, it's, it's worth maintaining positive relationships with everyone we can because you never know when we might need each other. Uh, and, and it's so interesting that later when Jesus comes and Jesus is threatened by King Herod, he flees to Egypt too. And so there are these things that just work where you can get help from others when you need it. And so uh, I think one of the lessons from Abraham uh, for us as a person of faith is that it's okay to find help in new places. It's okay to reach out to others that you've never reached out to before and, uh, and say, we together, we need these resources to succeed. And so uh, it's a one-way journey into the future. Expect to find resources in unexpected places. And then another insight, I think, from uh, Abram's life is that you can expect to make bad stress decisions along the way, but be blessed anyway. You know, about that Egypt famine thing, let's go back to that for a minute. Abram goes there for food, but something else happens while he's down there is that his wife, Sarah, is an attractive person and people start looking at Sarah and Abram gets afraid when he's in that foreign country. And so he lies, he tells people, oh yeah, that's my sister. And, uh, and that leads to some other problems going on. And uh, it turns out it was a very bad idea to do that. Uh, but it seemed like a good idea at the time to him. And things eventually work out, but Abraham gets reminded by others that that was not a good way to deal with stress by lying about Sarah. And uh, there's another part of the story where he's worried about not having children to carry on God's plan. And so he figures out another way to have children with someone else. Seemed like a good idea at the time, but it leads to all kinds of other problems for him. And so he has a child with Hagar, and some people see that as a root of a lot of Middle East conflict. But God stays with Abram uh, through all of this, and they work it out, and on they go. And he and Sarah have Isaac, and God shows that even when we mess it up, God can sort it out and keep us moving ahead. Grace recovery, so we can continue on the road to bless all people. You know, it's likely that we're make, you, we don't make all the right decisions during this time. We're under stress. We get afraid. We, we worry about how's this going to happen. And so we try this and we try that. And all of a sudden we, we look back and we say, well, that wasn't a very good thing to do, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. I think a few years from now, we'll all look back at these months and year that we have, uh, and about COVID and school and work and relationships and finances and our time, I suspect we'll have a number of occasions to say it seemed like a good idea at the time. Abraham's story reminds us that God can handle that, that we can trust God to keep moving forward, to be correctable, 
to learn from our mistakes, but that God doesn't abandon us. God keeps leading us into the future that God wants to create. And so part of what makes this work is, is what's called in the Abraham story an unconditional covenant, that God made a promise to Abraham and that God, it, it wasn't a conditional promise. So there are promises in the Bible that are conditional promises. Like when Moses comes along in the Bible story and they get the law and the commandments, God makes a conditional promise to them. If you do these things, I will bless you. And so there are many Bible verses that say, if you uh, pray and repent, then I will bless you. That's part of a conditional covenant. But Abraham is part of a different kind of a promise as a person of faith. He's part of what we call an unconditional promise where God just says, Abram, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bless you. And, and Abram falters and he fails and he makes bad decisions and it just keeps going because it's God who sustains the promise. And so believing in an unconditional love of God becomes very important for us, that we are recipients of grace. Paul says this, we are part of, we are the children, of, spiritual children of Abraham. And so uh, we're not in the, in the law anymore. We're, we are spiritual children of Abraham in a covenant, unconditional covenant of faith and blessing. And so this is a wonderful lesson. And finally, let me just say this, that we can expect things to take a long time. Uh, you know, uh, when God promised Abram, I'll bless all nations through you, Paul looks back at that and says, that was talking about Jesus, but that'll be 2000 years later. And, and when the children of Israel are in exile and the Southern kingdom are in exile, God says to them, you know, it's going to be 70 years before you get back. So make this work where you are. Uh, and so God's timing is often very different than our timing. That's one of the lessons of faith. Uh, we want COVID to be over this week, but it may take months or it may take a year or two. We don't, we don't know. We have to be faithful and wise all along the way. You know, I was talking to a Baptist pastor this past week about these odd times. And he was saying that in his church, he has people coming to him uh, often who expect the world to end tomorrow, you know. Uh, and, and so they're, and he says, they're just focused on that. And they're not focused on doing what they can with the current situation. And uh, uh, he tries to argue with them. He says, we don't know when Christ will return. We have to keep doing our best with what we have, where we are, and what we know. And I agree with him very much. You know, it'd be fine for God to blow the big whistle, the big referee whistle, and end the game and renew the heavens and the earth and make everything right. That'd be fine. But it's been 2,000 years since Abram was given a promise till Jesus came. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus, and it may be another 2,000 years. Uh, we have to. We have an unknown world. We know how, what direction we're going in and how we're to go. God's timetables are much longer than ours. It says in the Bible, a day is as a thousand years. Pay attention to the journey day by day. You know the direction and you know the blessing, that God wants to bless you and God wants to bless others. So do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God and bear witness to the amazing actions of God in sending Jesus into the world. So faith, hope, and love are what we need. We are the spiritual children of Abraham. We hear the call of Christ to a new life, and we set out on the adventure, not knowing all it will bring. But we know that whatever comes, we will be finding what we need, getting back up after falls, being part of this great thing called the kingdom of God that means to bless us and all we meet. With Abraham as our guide, we can be pros at facing uncertainty. May God give us the grace to learn from his story and to live in the love of God that he lived in. Amen. And so we come to our time of prayer together. And as we do that, I'd ask you to, uh, you know, be wise about what you put in social media, maybe just first names. 
Uh, our friend Eric is in the hospital. We ask you to pray for Eric. Audrey is home from the hospital, and we're very grateful to God for that. Things are going well for her. Um, let's pray for uh, all who mourn the loss of loved ones. There's been a lot in the news of people losing loved ones this week. Let's pray uh, for them and for COVID uh, people. You know, I was reading stories about people who don't go on ventilators, but they have long-term health problems because of COVID. So uh, let's take a moment for prayer. Let's pray together and for teachers and schools and students as well. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you at the end of this service, grateful for all that you've done, all that you've taught us, all that the scriptures have brought before us. Lord, we pray for the world. You uh, love the world. You sent your son into the world. And uh, Lord, we, we adventure, we don't understand all that's going on, but where we go, we go with you. And uh, we know that you've made a promise to be with us and that in our uh, ups and downs, our highs and lows, our failures, our weakness, uh, you continue with us to lead us forward. And so, Lord, we pray that you will use us to bless the world. We pray for the grace of God's spirit to give us the attitudes we need to be a blessing to others around us, that we might work together to create the future that would be a blessed future that you would have where there is justice and peace, grace and mercy. And so Lord, we pray for all who face suffering in our world. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Lord, we pray for those who care for others. We pray for teachers and students and administrators and staff as they all try to find their way through this time together. We pray for refugees. We pray for those in poverty and hunger. We pray for the unemployed. And we pray uh, for those uh, for whom uh, eviction is a real possibility. Lord, bless all who seek to answer that need. Lord, we pray for our nation. Be with our nation in this time of uh, challenge. Guide all of our officials in what they need. Lord, give us the ability to live in uh, justice and peace and truth, liberty and freedom. All of your gifts to us. Lord, we pray together for our community. And Lord, this is a time when the community really matters because it's likely that this is where our help is going to be found. And so open our eyes to the needs of others around us. Bless the ministries of Family Promise, of our deacons, of interfaith health and support services, uh, of our food ministry. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all of the ways in which you give us resources that are going to be available to people. Lord, we take a moment to pray uh, for the concerns that we carry on our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for all of your gifts, the, the, the sustenance for our food ministry from Fulfill and Southern Ocean Hunger Foundation for uh, Causeway's gift of a vehicle for us. We give you thanks, Lord, for uh, the ways in which we can reach out to each other. For Lord, we seek to be grateful, such an important point to us, to be grateful each day. And we remember the prayer you taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I'm gonna invite Amy back for our closing song. So hello again. Um, today's closing song um, is a song that was released a few years ago. It's called Thy Will. It's written or performed by Hilary Scott of the country band Lady A, but it was a very popular song. Uh, you'll probably recognize it. You. I 
know I've heard you loud and clear, so I follow you guys have a great week and so it's been good for us to be together today thank you Dara for coming in and teaching us something about breathing I pray you'll do the breathing uh, so if you can go back to the recording you can watch that video prayer for schools and uh, VBS song uh, was really helpful as well and Amy wonderful music that you've picked today. And so live in faith, hope, and love, friends. This is our journey of faith. And if you need anything from us, if you are need anything to be well, reach out to us. And so let me offer this benediction as we close today. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and every day. Amen. And so be well, join us for prayers at seven o'clock each night, Bible study Monday at six, but reach out for anything you need and remember to breathe. God bless you this week.